The Crusades, who, where, and why. Talking about the Middle Ages, we might think of the numerous pictures coming to mind. Plague, knights, dirt, and the Crusades, of course, thousands of people obsessed with the divine salvation traveled to Jerusalem to do what? Why were there so many of them? How to spot them? And what did it lead to? Let's figure it out. Do you like our videos? Subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends. How did it all start? At the beginning of 1095, the council headed by Pope Urban was held in Piacenza. The main Christian servants assembled to discuss the affairs related to the papal reforms. It aimed at strengthening the status of clergy and liberation of the church from the secular authorities who wanted to appoint their bishops. The most important attendees of the council were the representatives of the Byzantium Emperor Alexis I Communists. They asked for help in the war against the Seljuk Turks, hostile conquerors who came from Asia. They had already taken over the Byzantium territories in Asia Minor and Armenia and were ready to seize Constantinople. Urban II was so impressed by the news that he set off on a journey to northern Italy and France, where he delivered the famous speech of Claremont Council on November 27. There were so many people that he had to preach outside of the city walls. He spoke about the horrors of the Christian life in the East and called for a campaign to cleanse the Christian lands of the non-Christians. Moreover, he exhorted people to liberate Jerusalem. The thing is that in 1071, the holy city of Jerusalem was conquered by the Seljuk Turks who turned into threat to the Byzantium territories. Before that, the holy city had been under the Arabs for several centuries and they tolerated the Christians and pilgrims who came from Europe to worship the Holy Sepulchre. The Pope didn't hesitate to describe the suffering of the Eastern Christians as gloomy as possible. He reported that the new masters tend to desecrate Christian churches, infringe the rights of the local Christians and place obstacles to the pilgrims. They are often insulted and beaten, and Pope Urban II claimed that they toppled down the altars, disshallowing them with their filth, circumcised the Christians, pouring blood to the altars and baptismal fonts. In pious impulse, the thousands of voices shouted, that's what God wants, and responded to the call. The Pope also promised the forgiveness of sins for those who joined this uh, endeavor, and that's how the history of the Crusades started. Were the Crusades religious wars? To some extent, they were. People joined in to defend their faith and ensure salvation, especially when it comes to the First Crusade. But let's have a look from a different perspective of those who allegedly needed help. Byzantium didn't call for a crusade as the emperor was only interested in military support from the western countries. They had a defensive-minded war against the Seljuk Turks. The Eastern Christians didn't ask to liberate them. The pilgrims were free to worship and the crusade was the result of rumors, exaggerations and metaphors. In other words, medieval propaganda worked quite well. But what was the point for Urban II to deliver his speech that way? It's about his personal interests and claims. In the 11th century, the popes were fighting for power with the Holy Roman Empire. By the way, what is that Holy Roman Empire? Why did the pope fight for power at the Middle Ages, which are not as primitive as we are used to thinking, are the main topic of our course Medieval Europe, Plague, Gothic Style and Crusades. The link is in the description box. Theoretically, it was a struggle for the right to appoint bishops and abbots. However, from the political perspective, it is clear that they waged the war for the supreme power in the empire. The crusade might come in handy for Urban II, but what if we have a look from the Muslims' perspective? If they had neither a desire to massacre all the Christians nor a united Islamic world, let me remind you that the Seljuk Turks were Muslims. They pushed other Muslims, the Fatimids, out of Jerusalem. In other words, the religious nature of the Crusades is not that straightforward. Let there be Crusades. After the Council of Clermont, the Pope carried on preaching in France. Soon his word spread throughout Europe. The analysts wrote that the knight and peasants shared a common heartbeat of unanimity and enthusiasm. Urban II didn't expect that so many people wanted to join the campaign. For example, one of the leaders of the First Crusade, Godfrey of Bouillon, took out loans on most of his lands and sold them to the Bishop of Liege and the Bishop of Verdun in exchange for financial help. As you can see, the knights were overexcited. They had a chance to show off and fight for Christ. 
Yet they weren't the first to start off. Thousands of peasants and broke knights expressed their will and moved to Jerusalem a few months prior to the official start on August 15th. The monk Peter the Hermit turned into a spiritual leader of the movement and many people believed he was God's prophet. Most of the army was illiterate and consisted of the criminals and scum of the earth. They mistook every big city for Jerusalem because they had never seen it. There were about 50,000 of these religious tourists and robbers, only a few made it to Byzantium and they were not helpful to the emperor. The pilgrims were sent to Asia Minor where they ran into an ambush near Nicaea. On October 21st, 1096, the Seljuk Turks hunted them to extinction. Brave warriors slaughtered the peasants, many became slaves, and a small group of about 3,000 people managed to make it back to Constantinople. The real First Crusade started in the autumn of 1096. 300,000 of well-armed and well-disciplined warriors were led by the most valiant and noble knights of the time. They succeeded. In 1099, they took Jerusalem with blood and fire. It was the time when the Crusader states started to appear around. Shock for a medieval person. Well, you know, medieval tourism was an unusual phenomenon. A trip to a neighboring village was a journey of a lifetime. The Crusaders spent a year in an alien environment and heavy rains and weightless fogs blocked their way, which caused panic. The participant of the First Crusade, Raymond of Aguilars, wrote that the fog was incredibly thick that they were traveling, encountering such clouds of fog we could almost touch these vapors and shove them in front of us with our bodies. The mountains were also terrifying. There are not so many of them in Western Europe. In Greece, the Crusaders passed through the mountains that were so impassable and steep that the pilgrims, who tried to circumvent them, were getting closer to the stars to hell. People discovered a totally new world. The Further Crusades The First Crusade triggered the Muslim response. They threatened the Christian states in the Holy Land. In particular, in 1144, the Turks took over Edessa and Pope Eugene III declared the Second Crusade. Yet, it was unsuccessful. The Third Crusade followed the defeat of the Crusader army in Palestine, and in 1187 the Egyptian Sultan and an outstanding commander Saladin took over the coastal cities and seized Jerusalem. As a result, the Pope called for the Crusade. Jerusalem was so popular among the conquerors because of its great location. It controlled most of the eastern trade. And by the way, this crusade was a failure again. Jerusalem remained under Egypt, but the Christian pilgrims and merchants were allowed to visit the holy city for three years. As for the fourth crusade, note that the initial idea was to reach Jerusalem and recapture it. The crusaders wanted to get there by sea through Egypt. However, they didn't have money to buy the Venetian ships. Venice was obsessed with the idea of causing damage to their Byzantine counterparts, so they decided to use the military forces of the Crusaders. In 1204, the defenders of the Christ broke into the city and it sank in robbery, fires and bloodshed. The Fourth Crusade transformed from the journey to the Holy Sepulcher to a Venetian commercial endeavor and led to the second of Constantinople by the Crusaders. At the same time, it marked the crisis of the movement. It all spiraled into the massive dissension between Western and Byzantine Christianity. The United World fell apart. Rome, or the West, sacked and killed Constantinople the East. Many people called the Fourth Crusade cursed. The Crusaders forgot about their vow to bring the Holy Land back to Christianity, turned into dishonest mercenaries who hunted for easy money. The closer we look, the more we see. Religion paled into insignificance. Unexpected consequences. Apricot, lemon, pistachios, and rice are the products that were brought to Europe during the Crusades. They were not only about war, but also about cultural exchange. The campaign enriched the medieval knights who learned about the beauty of the East. When two cultures met, they gave birth to incredible things. European feudal lords started to decorate their houses and store their belongings in chests with carved patterns, arabesque, and it's not the main advantage. Have you ever wondered why the Italians of the 13-14 centuries were so interested in antiquity that they even revived it and started the Renaissance? It happened for a reason. Byzantium considered itself to be the heir of Rome and preserved the ancient culture with care and love. The crisis of Byzantium, the defeat of Constantinople in 1204 during the Fourth Crusade, made the residents leave Byzantium for Italy. The wealthy people brought the legacy of the Greek and Roman cultures with them. As a result, the Crusades turned into knotted vipers whose political ambitions, religious and secular motifs intertwined like tales. We'll leave it to you to decide what is more important. The Crusades turned into a landmark event of the Middle Ages and paved the way for the Renaissance. But why did the Renaissance try to forget about these times? 
Why did people give up on building Gothic cathedrals? Why are there so many weird and hilarious pictures in the holy books after all? We invite you to discuss these and many more questions in the course Medieval Ages Plague Gothic Style and Crusades. The link is in the description box. The video is over, give us a thumbs up, comment below and let us know what you think.